difference of two squares and the difference of two cubes. And then we'll also have in a little bit more of factoring review. So let's start with a review of factoring a trinomial. So remember we want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 10. So we've got 3x squared minus 12xy plus 2xy minus 8y squared. And that's factored. Now what if we have something like this? This one is going to help us if we rewrite it with a plus 0x in the middle, because if we have 0x, we can replace that so that we at least have this middle term. And now we can do this the same way. So we need to multiply to negative 9, but we need to add to 0. So positive 3 and negative 3 are really our only options here. So notice if we don't have a middle term, you can just put one in there with a 0 as the coefficient. So we're going to do the same thing here and add a 0 AB term in the middle. We want to multiply to negative 100 and add to 10, or sorry, add to 0. So 10 and negative 10. And there we go. Now let's try the same thing with this. So we need, we need to multiply to 144 and add to 0. Well, 12 and 12 are our options, which would guess to 0 if they were opposites, but they don't. Nothing else is going to add to 0, so this one is prime. And so, if we have a pattern where it's something squared minus something squared, you can just factor it straight into here, into using this pattern. So, for example, if we have 25x squared minus 9y squared, notice this is the same thing as 5x quantity squared minus 3y quantity squared. So using this pattern here, we can have this first term, the 5x, minus this 3y, and now the same thing, but with a plus in the middle. So this is just a little shortcut, so we don't have to do the table with these. It also works if you have a sum and difference of cubes, so numbers that are getting cubed. So let's use these. So notice this 27 is actually 3 cubed. So we're going to be using this first pattern. So we'll have the things that are getting cubed, so p plus 3. And then the first thing squared, so p squared, minus each of these first two terms times each other, so 3 times p. And then we'll have our plus this third term squared, so 3 squared, which was 9. On this second one, so notice first we can factor an 8 out from both of these. And now we can do this is 2b cubed right here. So I'll have this 8 out front, but we're still following this pattern. So we'll have p minus 2b. And then our first term squared plus our first term times the second term, so 2pb plus 
the second term squared, so 4b squared. However, if you hadn't noticed that right away, you could see, I'm just going to jump down here, you could recognize that this is 2p cubed minus 4b cubed, and using that same pattern, gotten 2p minus 4b, and then 4p squared plus 8pb plus 16b squared. And now notice there's still a 2 we can factor out of here, and a 4 we can factor out of here. And combining this 2 and the 4, and that is the same thing we got up here in the blue, so it doesn't matter as long as you get everything factored in the end. If you don't see it till the end, that's fine. Alright, what about this one? Notice we can rewrite this as x cubed squared minus 1, so it's a difference of squares. So now, remember our difference of squares was a plus b and then a minus b. So we'll have this term plus our 1, and then this term minus our 1. And now notice this first one is a sum of cubes. And this one is a difference of cubes. So this is our answer. All right, now factoring this one. Once again, notice this is 4x squared squared minus 9y squared. So once again, it's a difference of squares. So we'll have our 4x squared minus 9y and then our 4x squared plus 9y. Now notice this is not a y squared, so this isn't a difference of squares anymore over here. So we can't factor anymore. So we are done.